What's the worst job you ever had? Because there's a lot of different kinds of bad jobs out there and they all suck in their own little sucky ways. There's the physically demanding job where you just wear down your body over time. There's the straight up dangerous job where you put your life on the line every day. There's the mentally exhausting job that brings you to the breaking point on a daily basis. There's the boring, repetitive job that just makes you feel like another cog in the machine. And then there's now all the jobs that exist thanks to the internet, like the overpaid, know-it-all, social media influencer douchebag. There will probably always be crappy jobs, at least until super intelligent AI comes along and automates us out of existence. But as bad as jobs might be today, they don't hold a candle to the just astonishingly dangerous jobs of the past. For most of human history, workplace safety just wasn't really a thing. It just was a completely foreign concept. If something had to be done, you just threw a whole bunch of human life and suffering at it. You know, the ancient Egyptians weren't exactly going through labor unions to build the pyramids. In fact, for most of human history, most of the work was done by a slave class that wasn't even being paid for their labor. Luckily, here in the land of the free, we only tolerated that for about 100 years or so. It wasn't really until the turn of the last century that the whole idea of workplace safety got any attention at all, with the birth of brotherhoods of railroad workers, the Knights of Labor, the American Federation of Labor, and, and work-friendly laws that provided protections for workers. Now before you guys start getting political in the comments and start complaining about labor unions and mobs and corruption and that kind of thing, let's talk for a second about Fosse Jaw. Those of you who are squeamish just might want to, you know, not be here for this one. Fosse jaw is also known as phosphorus necrosis of the jaw, and it's also called the Dear God, why is the bottom half of my face falling off disease? Because that's what happens. Your jaw falls off. It's unpleasant. White phosphorus, sometimes called yellow phosphorus, was used in matchsticks in the 1800s. The problem is when the matchstick workers were exposed to phosphorus vapor, it would combine with water and CO2 to create bisphosphates in the mouth. Biphosphates. This would lead to pervasive toothaches, eventually the teeth would fall out, the gums would swell, and release pus and a nice sweet, sweet smell of decay as the phosphorus eats through your jawbone. Eventually the jawbone would just separate from the rest of the face, which led to a common look that many matchstick workers had where their mouths just kind of hung open all the time. In fact, it was common for people with fossy jaw to wrap scarves around the top of their heads just to keep their mouths closed. This was obviously excruciating for the person that was suffering through this, and eventually their jaws would have to be removed just to save their lives. Fosse jaw was first linked to white phosphorus in 1839 by a physician in Vienna, but companies continued to use it throughout the 1800s, which eventually led to the matchstick workers' strike in London in 1888. Finland was the first country to ban white phosphorus in matches in 1872, and the United States eventually banned it with the White Phosphorus Match Act of 1912. This forced the match companies to use red phosphorus, which worked just as well as white phosphorus, but they avoided doing it for 73 years because, say it with me, it was a little more expensive. Luckily, this was the last case of a company putting their workers at risk just to save a buck, except no, it totally wasn't. In 1917, a mere five years after the United States banned white phosphorus, we entered World War I, and this was the first war where airplanes played a big part. And this spurred on the invention of glow-in-the-dark paint, which made it easier for pilots to see their instrument panels at night. By the way, I love the name they gave this stuff. They called it Undark. It's like darkness, but un. They could have also named it unsafe, because it was safe, except totally not. Because Undark was made of zinc oxide and radium a fact that the company who made Undark cleverly hid from the public by naming themselves the United States Radium Corporation. A quick background on radium, it's a radioactive element that was discovered by Mary Curie in 1898, and she did experiments with it throughout her life, and it did eventually kill her via aplastic anemia. In fact, the doorknobs to her lab are still dangerously radioactive to this day. Fast forward about 20 years and the USRC began hiring in their factory in Orange, New Jersey to support the war effort, and much like later on in World War II and World War I, a whole bunch of women came out and joined and started working in the factories to support the war effort. And a job at the Radium Corporation was actually considered a pretty good job at the time, you know? There wasn't a lot of loud, heavy factory equipment to deal with, it was air conditioned, and it paid pretty well. A Radium girl could make $20 a day just painting dials. $20 a day doesn't sound like much now, but considering back in the day you could get a whole house for 3200 bucks, not bad. Wish I could get a house for 3200 bucks. And the only downside is, you know, early death. That kind of thing. I mean, you just have to weigh how much you want to keep living versus how much you like air conditioning. And by the way, it's not just that they were handling dangerous radioactive materials, it's that they were doing so while being told that it was completely safe. 
In fact, the women were coached to do what they called the lip dip paint technique, where they actually used their lips to pull the brush to a fine point. They were just ingesting this stuff day after day after day. And they actually thought that the paint was so safe that they actually used it to paint their fingernails because they found that at night when it glowed, it was fun and alluring. It's not like the company didn't know that this was dangerous, okay? The managers would actually wear lead aprons when they walked out of the floor and they handled the paint with ivory tongs. Cool, guys. Tight. And inevitably, of course, bad things started to happen and the first unfortunate victim was a girl named Molly Magia. So what radium does is it binds to calcium, so it finds its way into the bones where it kind of pokes holes in the bones, making them brittle and weak. And it affects the bones that the body uh, stresses the most, so like the legs and, of course, the jaw. Much like Fosse jaw, it started as a toothache. As her teeth were pulled, it was replaced by dark pustules oozing blood and pus. Her legs started hurting so bad that she couldn't even stand on them anymore, and as she became bedridden, her jaw continued to deteriorate, eventually breaking apart into several pieces. Eventually, her whole jaw had to be removed, and it was so fragile that as they pulled it out of her face, it literally crumbled in the doctor's hands. Sadly, Molly died soon after due to complications when a blood vessel burst in her throat. And the doctors, perhaps at the behest of the company, listed her cause of death as syphilis. Ah, the old let's get out of our responsibility by calling the woman a whore bit. A classic. Sadly, Molly's horrific experience would repeat itself over and over and over and over again. And the USRC would continue to deny responsibility even after an independent study linked their deaths to radium poisoning. They just went and did their own study, which, shocker, said that they weren't responsible for it. In fact, the claims of the factory workers weren't taken seriously until the doctors who treated them began dying of radium poisoning. The death of Dr. Edwin Lehman finally resulted in a class action lawsuit against the company by the workers. But if you think that things are about to get a little bit better, they are not. Because the judge in the case postponed the trial over and over and over again until the women just had to settle out of court, which of course means that the company didn't have to admit to any wrongdoing. Now, nobody knows exactly why the judge did this, but the fact that he was a shareholder in the United States Radium Corporation, I'm sure that had nothing to do with it. The only real good news here is that this case did get widespread news attention and led to lawsuits at other radium corporations, yes, there were more than one, and some of these did actually go in the favor of the plaintiff. And it was because of the plight of the radium girls that eventually watchdog groups like the Occupational Safety and Health Administration were formed, but sadly, most of the radium girls didn't get to actually see this take place because they all died by the 1930s. Now, it might be tempting to ask why these women were so willing to work with such a dangerous substance or say they were too stupid to know any better, but in all fairness, there was kind of this radium craze going on at the time. You know how in comic books people become superheroes because they got exposed to gamma rays or some kind of nuclear energy? People kind of believed that back then. Like, that's where those ideas in the comic books came from. When we first discovered radioactivity, people were just fascinated by this idea that energy was just coming out of rocks and stuff. I mean, surely you could use that to give yourself vim and vega. So they actually put radium in all kinds of stuff, thinking it was good for you. There was a drink called Radithor that contained radium salts and was praised for its health benefits. It was a radium-infused toothpaste called Domarad that was said to make your teeth whiter with the power of nuclear energy. There were radium-treated pots called Revigators that would infuse water with radium when you drank out of it. Spas even offered radium mud baths and skin treatments. Stuff like this was everywhere, so of course the factory workers didn't think twice about working with radium. They probably even thought it had some health benefits. The difference is the water and the toothpaste and all that stuff, they just had trace amounts of radium in it, whereas this undark stuff was just loaded with it. In fact, I covered in a previous video the story of David Hahn, the nuclear boy scout, and he actually collected clocks that had radium glow-in-the-dark paint in it and used that to make a working nuclear reactor. So yeah, just smear some more of that stuff on your lips there, ladies. Now, I would love to say that the radium girls and the Fosse jaw were isolated cases, but they are very not from the hatters and the haberdashers that went crazy from mercury poisoning to the mule spinner's cancer that affected workers in the textile industry. This is in, by no means unique. Today you hear about horrible working conditions in places like Amazon's fulfillment center. And of course the threat today is that if humans can't keep up the pace, then they'll just be automated out of a job completely. As long as it costs companies less money to settle lawsuits than to improve workplace conditions, there will always be occupational hazards. And before anybody goes on an anti-capitalism rant in the comments, I should just point out, you know, Chernobyl, 3.6 Röntgen, not great, not terrible. 
But I'll wrap this up by going back to my first question. What's the worst job you've ever had? Let's see if anybody can beat losing their jaw from work. Talk about it down in the comments. All right, thanks for watching. If you're a longtime viewer, I hope you enjoyed that. And if you're a new viewer, I also hope you enjoyed it. But Google thinks you might like this video too, so you might want to check that out or any of my other videos down there. And if you like them, if you enjoy this kind of stuff, I invite you to subscribe. I come back with videos every Monday and every Thursday. T-shirts available at the store, answerswithjoe.com slash shirts. They're fun, they're cool, check them out. Thanks again for watching. You guys go out now, have an eye-opening rest of the week, and I'll see you on Monday. Love you guys, take care.